and this is for anybody that you know argues on Twitter and or Facebook or anything. Comprehension, people. Comprehension is like I had to deal with it twice with different things, but the one that got me, and I already see this to my group chat, but for context, I'm going to uh, you know, tell the audience. This dude on my Facebook, he asked this question. He was like, having a debate, um, why can't homosexuality and masculinity ex coexist? And I basically gave this answer. In my personal opinion, it's because of how people look at gays. Also, when majority of them come out the closet, they act like women. Not just dressing like it, acting like it, even changing their tone, calling each other girl, bitch, and shit like that. The image, if the image of a gay person was more like Mike Tyson or any other masculine male you could think of, it would probably be viewed differently. Now, that sounded like a very logical answer, right? Because if you look at the media, especially like the early 80s and up until like Will and Grace, every person that was gay or like you at least personified as gay and they was a gay male, they always had feminine traits or they would snap their fingers. They go, hey, when... Um, David Wayans and David Allegra did men on film. They mm -hmm. wore tight ass clothes in, and he was like two sweets and hated it. All that the voice and all that other stuff. That's what you've seen on TV. So that's what a lot of people, when you think of coming out the closet, that's what they think about when you think of a gay man. That's what they think mm -hmm. of. I was like, okay, that's why. Masculine gays. So I have two. I have two, and, and I told people not to like what Will and Grace. It's like because Will was he was normal. Mm -hmm. He was very masculine. He was very normal. But Jack, that's what everybody think of when you think of a gay person. Jack. So uh, one of the dudes, he replies, what you're saying is that you want gays to look a certain way, even though majority of the straights don't look that way. <laughs> he said, 10% wow. of the U.S. is gay. One out of 10. Think about when you watch sports because there's at least one closet homosexual in every roster. So I replied, I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> I never can I add that what you said honestly has nothing to do with what you said. Has that, has that changed any has that has being gay ever changed an athlete's uh, performance? No. no. Exactly. <laughs> so how is that what you're saying? But oh that's a, but the thing is he was like, oh, so you want gays to act a certain way? I said I never said that. No. It was like I never said I want gays to look like anything. I said the image of the gay man that's been portrayed, even when I step outside, they mm -hmm. act like women, which you can see for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then this other person goes, "It seems like you're just lumping all gay men with the stereotypical feminine gay men." Yeah, you got offended. That's all. <laughs> he does. Also, that. real quick, Ray, shout out to Anthony Bowens from AEW because he's fire. He's a yo. Know, he was he was putting off fantastic matches. He was. <laughs> in AEW. So shout out to him. But yeah, and yeah. like she said, uh, she said not all gay men are represented by their sexuality or represented by as flamboyant in the media, just like how all straight men are solely represented by their sexuality. The fact that you matter is you wouldn't even know a lot of gay men are gay unless they explicitly tell you are. That's a fucking lie. Because there's a lot of people you could tell they're gay before you even say a fucking word. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like I understand I we on are one hand the famous gay people that don't act that way that don't that aren't flamboyant, and one of them is yeah. one of my favorite actors. So I'm like, huh, I could I could just think of Neil Patrick Harris, right? If, for me, it's John Barrowman. If you, I didn't even I don't even know who that is, but it's okay. Just, if you I'm watch pretty... Arrow, I'm sure any of you all watch Arrow, right? On CW. Yeah. Who was he on Arrow? He was the first bad guy, um, Dark Archer, the other uh, guy, the one that killed off the family, the main baddie in the first season. He came back once in a while, but he was the guy that huh, Tommy's father. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Motherfucker. Yeah, he's gay, straight up gay. I remember him from back in Doctor Who and um, all the British shows before he moved to the states. He's a Scottish, and he's straight up gay. He's you know. But he doesn't act flamboyant unless a role asks for it. But in his real life, he doesn't do that. He's and he does. I've never seen him portrayed that way either. Even in Doctor Who, who he was considered omnisexual. Where it didn't even matter what, because you know Doctor Who's about space travel and shit. So that meant he will fuck aliens no matter what gender you are. He didn't act flamboyant <laughs> at all. 
at yeah, all. So he, man, so he would literally fuck anything. Yeah. <laughs> He's my favorite also, character Omar, in that whole in that whole Doctor Who series. You know. Also, Omar from The Wire, because like he was gay, mm. but he never acted yeah. flamboyant. He was actually pretty masculine. Matter yeah. of fact, niggas feared him, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they knew he was gay. They feared him, so mm. it's just like I know this, and this is what I tell people: I know that there are men that you know act masculine, as what D was done stated, as what I done stated. But you cannot deny the point that when people think about, or like the ma- the majority of people, when they think of a gay person, they think of the most flamboyant person you can think of. They'll yeah. think of a Perez Hilton, uh, J- mm-hmm. James Charles, yeah. uh, what's what's his name, Bretman Rock, and you know niggas like that or something like that. It's just that it's Bobby, like you Bobby wouldn't Lights. like I yes. <laughs> the Bobby Lights. <laughs> and that man, I'm sorry, he's super flamboyant. That shit is just like, that's what niggas yeah. think about. Yeah. All right. Like, nobody is naming Michael. Michael Sam is not the first person you think of, or Jason Collins, or motherfucking Darren Young from WWE. Those are some masculine ass dudes, but that are, you know, fucking gay. But, you know, these are, most of the time you're thinking of, you're thinking of more flamboyant. And that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I, and, that's why I said if most people had, like, you know, if most people or most gay men was presented like someone like a Mike Tyson, who is just like, that nigga will knock you out. And, you know, he done said, and this is the man who said, I will fuck you until you love me, faggot. Right. He done, <laughs> <laughs> like, he said that. Anybody else, that would have sound gay. But that yeah, shit bro. sounded fucking scary when Mike said like, that. He doesn't even have to say pause, yo. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did it. I remember saying that. I said, I don't want to meet this man. <laughs> I want to meet him now. But then I was like, if someone ever said that uh-huh. and he looked like Mike Tyson, I'm <laughs> I'm going to fuck yeah, up the other way. Quick, yeah, but real quick, what do we always say, Ray? 90s gays will fuck you. Because we know. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, the, the people like Flame Monroe exist, okay? Like, even though that's a, a trans woman. Like, them motherfuckers don't give a fuck that, you know, you call them whatever pronoun. You know, that's just the way they are. You know what I'm saying? It was just giving them that respect. And that was literally it. Like, yeah, you know, it's at the, I feel like at the end of the day, it's all about respect. But at the same time, your point was literally proven so many times with all the examples you gave. As a matter of fact, right. you didn't even have to think about the shit. <laughs> right. And uh, also, just like I understand, and this is probably when I'm going. To, I understand, like, like the LGBT, they can be like a lot of people pick on them, a lot of people fuck with them, just like a lot of people fuck with black people and all that other stuff. And sometimes we don't see shit that that's in the media that you know black people. Sometimes we got to look at it, it's like, damn, is that racist or not? Or you know, like, uh, my. Well, uh, motherfucking the big ass black dancing nigga, they call himself the grooving gorilla and all that other stuff. Like, dudes kind of have problems with that and all that other stuff, but I think it's because of his dance. They don't like seeing big black yeah. niggas dancing like that. I don't know, I, except for Terry Crews. I, and when Terry Crews does it, it's funny, it's just weird when <laughs> I chalk that up to the faces he makes when he dances. <laughs> but Terry, I, 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 I see Terry Crews. But I think Terry Crews pop lock. No one else says a fucking thing. It's fucking hilarious when Terry Crews does it. So it's just like when he, this other big buff ass nigga dances. It's just like well, a lot of people what look at this. Scary is, what, what makes it funny? He'll go from the he, the better on the character he's playing. He'll go from all big and scary and intimidating and shit to him, you know, break dancing the pop lock and shit with no shirt on and shit. Yeah. But I, but yeah, but like I say, I understand like. These people have been oppressed. These people has been like fucked with and all that other stuff. But sometimes not everybody, especially when we're having conversations like this, not everybody's coming from a place of attacking. Is you know some people is just like this is what I view, especially like this is what I view in the world. This is what I see sometimes, and it's just like maybe that's why. If you're wondering why things are this way, these are my thoughts. These are my views, and this is what you see. Not everything is coming as an attack, especially you're like, I understand like a lot of people do come at gays, but not everything people say is homophobic sometimes. Sometimes the shit we say is like very logical and it's like very real. It's, it's like, I, it's like we're, not, we're not coming from a place of hate. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to sit there 
maybe if it if it bugs you or confuses you, read it a couple times. You know, if it if it's something you see, just maybe bring it back a couple times just to understand what he's saying before you give out our answers, before you like do your response. Because sometimes when y'all respond. It has nothing to do with the situation or nothing to do with what we're talking about. Literally. So it's literally like, and n- not just for this. I don't see it for women, especially when like uh, <laughs> Ruth George, the roof, like the Ruth George shit. When someone yeah. told me that uh, most, like most uh, rape victims are people that you know, and I said, as true as the fact is, the guy that did that, she didn't know who the fuck he was. He was a stranger, so he was the literal boogeyman. And I had to tell that to a woman, and even though I was, you know, everything I said was true, she still tried to argue with the fact. And I was like, ma'am, please copy him the sentence before you start, you know. I understand. <laughs> like, I, understand, I understand. Some topics are sensitive, and some people, they do, and I've seen it from the other side when people, like, uh, they say stuff, they say stuff very ignorant. To where it's just like I understand what he's saying, but I wish he didn't say it like that. But yeah. not everybody just. But like I said, not everybody's coming from a place of hate. May I add one thing? Go, Go ahead, going Dion. back, going back to how um, gays are always always seem to be portrayed as you know feminine and whatnot. I want everyone to remember, the booty warrior from the Boondocks is based on an actual person. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, you know, I actually looked up information about him. You know, he used to be a uh uh what's it, Greek wrestler, one of them high school wrestlers. That, like, so when he said when you do it the easy way or the hard way, the nigga had technique. So he oh. knows that he fuck it down. <laughs> so yo, yeah. oh my god, he that, you're not that nigga know. was nothing. He was nothing to be played with. So shit. he likes you and he wants you. <laughs> so he was able to back up them words, yo. It wasn't just Yeah, he was able to back you. up them words. Shit. And that no, nah, that man was a little psychopath though. He like he 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 he, he would rather do do it the hard way mm. sometimes. It, is he's more important than water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that shit was just funny to me. Yo. I like booty. I like boo. <laughs> but uh, uh, anybody else got something to say before I end the, end the podcast? Nah, oh. that's it. Okay. 90s right. games and, fuck you up. Yeah, 90s games will fuck you up. <laughs> I'm going to just end it right there. Um, I would like to thank the panel for jumping on this podcast once again. Uh, Crystal, she couldn't make it. She said she got uh, she had something to do in the morning. So she had to make sure she was up. So, but she sends uh, her warm regards to us. So, um, God bless you, Crystal. God bless. You, and man. yeah, God. Bless. And I would like to thank all of y'all for listening to hear us talk our shit again. This is you know what. Let me just say podcast, and we signing out. Peace. Cheers. Adios.